what's up divas and divos so it's your girl april you guys already know what time it is it's real talk wednesday i'm gonna be honest and tell you guys i am not really feeling at my best okay but it's real talk wednesday well it's really tuesday but you know i would have did it yesterday but yesterday i was even worse um so i just said i'm gonna just do this I took some medication and i'm gonna just do this um yeah, I'm just going to do this. So I really don't feel that great. You know, I was explaining to you guys before in the past about me having an ablation and now needing a full hysterectomy. So it seemed like I had went like two or three months without any type of pain. And then now it came back and it came back like every other month, the pain. And the pain is just not like menstrual cramps. It feels like labor cramps, like labor pains. Like, you know, your, your ass about to have a baby. That's what it feels like. So I am in not the worst of pain right now because I have taken some medication, but I will tell you this, it don't really feel that great. But if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And I'm still going to have to record like a week video after this because I just like to get things out of the way. And it's not even that I tell you that I'm going to do something because if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. But if I already have a mindset to do something, then I'm definitely going to do it. Um, and I really don't let too much get me down. Um, but when I do have like the severity of the pain, if that's the right word to use, then that's when I can't do anything. So I try to get as much as done as possible um, prior to that, to that level of pain. Like I can take but so much, but I don't think, well, there are some women out there that can really take the pain of labor pains. I'm not one of them. Like, you know, and especially if I'm not having a baby, it really definitely feels like labor pains. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of women that watch me that can relate to this because I have had comments and comments regarding the same issues. Um, so, you know, I do need to get a full hysterectomy and I just recently signed up for some health insurance. So hopefully, you know. I can get this taken care of really soon. I'm not saying like it's an excitement for me to do or to go through. Like I'm not really like excited to go get any kind of surgery done unless I'm going to get like my boobs done. And I'm probably even then wouldn't probably feel like so excited about it because who really wants to be put to sleep just in order for them to cut you open. So that's the part that really makes me nervous. And I think I prolonged this long enough. And I thought I was getting better because I had went, like I said, a few months without feeling the pain but it it did come come back so you know i will hopefully get this taken care of within the next few months and i won't have to feel like this anymore but you know i don't feel like this through the whole entire like six days of my you know menstrual but i feel like this for like the first two days it used to be like three but it has subsided down to two so you know i've taken some medication and like sometimes it'll knock the pain out, not completely, um, but it will knock like probably like 85% of it out. And the 85 is better than zero for me. But so that's what I'm going through right now. So if I don't seem so upbeat, then please excuse me. Um, other than that, that is really, I don't, I'm trying to think like, what have I been doing um, lately? Like nothing but videos, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Um, I thought I would just keep wearing white t-shirts. I have like so many of these t-shirts, you know, when you go to like those little, I don't know what you want to call those little um, bodega, no, cause a bodega is like where they sell food at. So like, I don't know, it's like a, a clothing bodega then. We don't just call it that. Where they got like, they got racks of shirts and like, if you selling them for two bucks or two ninety nine, girl, I am buying like a whole bunch of them, especially because they're white. When I say a bunch, I'm not saying I'm filling up my cart, but I probably buy like five at a time, especially if they two dollars and you know they're pretty good, decent quality. Then hey, because it's the same thing. If you buy like an expensive white T-shirt, eventually it's going to be like an off-white and then to a yellow or a beige. So I bought like a bunch of them and I felt like you know what I'm just going to use them to do my videos in like a majority of my videos, especially when I have like the backdrop like certain color backdrops because it's just like a lot easier to match a white t-shirt up with any type of backdrop or headscarf you have so I just found that to be much easier than putting on like 
you know, my favorite type of t-shirts. You guys know I love like character t-shirts and shit like that. But yeah, I figured this would be easier as far as just wearing a white t-shirt. So if you guys see me in enough videos with a white t-shirt on, trust and believe a bitch got enough of them. And, you know, I think I do see like a lot of YouTubers. Um, There was one that used to always do her videos in white t-shirts was Nene Loves Makeup. And that went great because she was doing makeup. She didn't have to worry about matching it up. So it kind of left like the rest of the backdrop and the canvas like more exposed, like, you know, it brought it out together instead of wearing like something so colorful. You know, um, but yeah, maybe I'll try to get like a fancy white shirt, you know, like something off the shoulder, sexy. I'm not about to pull this out, stretch it out because, but you know what I'm saying? And don't you hate when like, okay, I don't know about you guys, but I hate once you wash them, sometimes they start getting a little bit wrinkled right here, like bacon, the bacon neck. Oh my God. Yeah. Can't do it. But anyway, other than that, you guys, um, I'm trying to think, is there anything that no i doubt it i doubt it so look i'm like looking around like hmm. oh i hope you guys checked out my video that was posted up yesterday because i'm talking like for tomorrow but it really was posted up today tuesday but i'm talking like for tomorrow but i hope you guys post checked out my video that was posted up yesterday which was the supplies that i used to make my wigs i thought i would just throw that out there because it was informative and i know a lot of people have asked me what type of wig caps do i use or what kind of mannequin head do i use so i just figured you know let me just make this video real quick so that way i can show everyone the things, the items that I use just to bring my wigs together. And I hope it was helpful. And if you haven't checked it out, definitely go to my channel and check it out. Also, you have to check out, okay, listen, I love RPG Show and I love uh, My First Wigs because, you know, they, they are a sister company. But there are so many other wig companies out there like Hair Vi Vi, Hair VV. I love them too. Like, seriously, I really do like them a lot. Um, but, you know, I have been rocking with RPG Show since probably like a year or two after they first opened. So we have been down for like so many years and they like got a lot of slack in the beginning of their lace week career. They got, a, they did have a lot of slack and it wasn't like the best of slacks either, but you know, I've been down with them for that long period of time and they've always treated me good. You know, we've met up in New York city. They, 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 they just always treated me really, really good. But in my honest opinion, I have told you guys before that, yes, I do think that their wigs are a bit pricey um, than other websites. So, you know, and for the same type of quality, I, I would probably definitely, if I had to purchase, I would definitely go to the cheaper side. But anyway, so their sister company, My First Wigs, they, um, they're they not as cheap as well. Their prices do seem like in the same range. And it seems like to me that I noticed like, I don't know. I like a lot of hair, not like Afro, like I'm not saying like I like to look like a shaggy dog, but I do like it to be nice and full because I tell you guys time and time again, if you're going to wear a wig, then do it big. I don't really want to wear a wig that's thin as my hair. Like for the, that speaks the whole fucking purpose. Like for real, a bitch could just wear her own shit out. But I do like a little bit more volume and density to my wigs. And even though theirs would be like 200, it still seems like 150 to me versus somebody else's that's 150. Well, anyway, their sister company, My First Wigs, which is wigs for beginners. I'm not really sure what a beginner wig is because I think that they're all made the same, all the same quality. They may come with a little bit of extra amenities like a comb or some clips, but I still think that it's the same exact quality. Like you can't give somebody that's a wig beginner a cheap ass wig and feel like they should just be able to deal with that but anyway so i like their wigs i'm not going to say i'm in love with all of them but for the most part i'm not in love with all of them from my first wigs um they don't really have like a huge selection opposed to rpg show so anyway i do this video the other day for my first wigs and um let me tell you i commend them on this hairline because for real sister sister girl hunties the hairline was like amazing amaze balls now yeah keep in mind i did bleach the knots because they did need that like if you're going to give a wig or have a a, a particular site for just newbies to the wig game 
then girl, please bleach the knots for them because if this is their first time and then they have to go in and bleach their own knots, I guarantee you they are going to probably 90% of the time there's going to be a mistake or it's going to be like an error. But um, so I did go in and bleach the knots of the unit and I did pre-tweeze like a little bit of the hairline, but they did like an amazing job on it. So it was a glueless full lace and that was the whole point of the video just to showcase you guys the difference between lace front 360 full lace wigs and the glueless full lace wigs. Um, and then they have those V part, uh, I think it's called lace wigs. Like it's only lace in the middle. Like that's the bullshit lace wigs. Okay. RBG show don't even sell those. But anyway, those are the cheapest of the cheap. But anyway, so um, I did a glueless full lace because that's just my favorite. I love full lace wigs. Not the ones that you got to adhere all around, but the glueless ones. Those are my favorite because, you know, you could just part it and do just so much more with it opposed to like a 360 or a lace front because the tracks are there. But either way, I mean, I could like still probably, I can probably still achieve like the same type of hairstyle with the lace front at 360 versus um like you know as a as a full lace but anyway so i did the video and it posted up monday and i was so amazed at the hairline and even um the company was excuse me even the company was um somebody knock at my door come in i don't think i'm bugging out um that's a little bit too much um bronzer but um so i did like some dutch braids and a bun and a ponytail but i was just like so like amazed with the damn wig hairline that i was like oh yes the bitch is definitely gonna keep this one definitely gonna keep this one so um yeah but you definitely have to check out the video um i know they might be a little bit pricier um you can definitely get the lace front that is the same um exact wig as the full lace wig but i just wanted to tell you guys make sure you check it out so we're gonna get into this real talk so that way i can do this other video and then relax for the rest of the day i did want to go to walmart but i guess i could just wait because it ain't that important but i did want some cheese but i guess i can go to the grocery store for that so anyway or i could just send somebody like my daughter tied because she has a car but anyway so let's get into this real talk if you guys have a real talk that you would like for me to read on youtube you can always send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com make sure to put in the subject line real talk if you have people in the real talk that you are talking to yourself and you don't want to be known you can always tell me you change the names. If you don't, tell me that. 99.9% .9 of the time, baby zaddies, I'm going to change the name for you. Okay? Yes. 99.9% .9 baby zaddies. The name will get changed because you guys are my baby zaddies. So, let's get into this real talk. Okay? Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. All right, you guys. Also, I wanted to share with you guys. So, I'm going to post the video up this week. But, you know, it's like, it's the video, what the hell, the crap that I get in the mail. So, first of all, this company reached out to me, and I was, like, so amazed. Like, you know, because I love candles. I love me some fucking candles. So, they're called Homesick, all right? And I did feature them in my video. When I got this video, I mean, when I got this candle, before you could even open the box that it was inside of, you could smell it. And what they specialize in is scents of um, just scents for each state. So it's called homesick.com. And they hand they're hand poured scented candles made in small batches in the US. So and they're soy wax. The candle was $29 on the website. Okay. And like I said, they specialize in candles or states. So this one, of course, is New York because that is my home state. So when I got the candle and then I took it out the box, you could like smell it. It was so strong and it smelled so good. Like just like pleasantly good. Like for real, you didn't even have to go like this. You could just smell it. And I, the candle's not even in here right now. Okay, just some, you know, just some garbage. Um, but you can still smell the candle that wasn't here. And it comes in a, a glass tall jar like this and it has one wick. So anyway, it smelled so good. I was just like, okay. 
30 bucks, this candle better smell good because you know me, I'm all about the bath and body works. Like you could smell them shits wherever. So this is the New York scent. It scents of the Adirondacks and the autumn fragrance of pumpkins and apple orchards. Finished by sweet hay and rushing river mixed with spice notes of nutmeg and cinnamon. Let me tell y'all, this candle smells so good, all right? So when it came time for me to burn it, you know, I'll be thinking sometimes that I'm a little bit cuckoo and crazy because I just be like, well, I know I smelt the candle all in the box and shit. So when I light it, I keep like walking by in that same area where I have my Bath and Body Works candles blazing. I had this candle. This was the only one that was burning. And I keep walking by like any moment now I'm going to smell this shit, right? So I let it burn for like two, three hours. Please tell me why I didn't smell a goddamn thing, okay? So I says to myself, okay, this is some bullshit. In the video review that I did about it, I did say it smelled really good, okay? I did. Now I'm going to have to put a blurb in there letting them know it smelled good as long as you don't burn it. And that's when you don't smell a damn thing. So I said, okay, April, why don't you bring it upstairs in your room? So this is a few days later, and I decided to bring it in my room only because, you know, downstairs is way big. It's way bigger than my bedroom. I say that my room is small because it's not, but downstairs is way bigger. So, you know, I bring it upstairs last night, and then I'm burning it all this morning as I'm taking a shower, getting dressed, you know, doing all of that stuff, you know, that we do. No, I don't smell a fucking thing, not a fucking thing. Like, so I'm really like not uptight because I didn't spend $30, but had I spent $30, a bitch would be blazing. I would be fuming, flames and all coming out of me. I probably, you would probably smell me cooking faster than you would ever smell that candle. So, I mean, like, this is not like, what's up for $30? You could spend it at freaking Bath and Body Works or Yankee Candle. But I just wanted to throw that out there to you guys. So let's get into this real talk real quick. Okay, because it is 12.20 my time. Hey, April love. On Wednesday, <clears throat> excuse me, 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 me. On Wednesday, May 25th, 2016, you read my long email I sent you about myself, Trina, my fiance, T, and that chick, Siobhan, lesbian relationship. Well, I wanted to give you an update since then, two years later. T and I ended up getting married October 2016, and we have been on cloud nine ever since and trying to have our first child. Well, since I last wrote you, Siobhan has still been hitting me up. And just so no, just so you know, from the last mail, from the last email I sent you, I did block her each and every time she has tried to contact me. Well, she has tons of Facebook pages. I don't know why. But she does, and every time I block her, all she does is make a new Facebook page. I have called the police, and they have told me it's nothing they can do because it's no threats being made. Not trying to be a snitch or nothing, but shit, this is crazy. So I deleted my Facebook and even made a new page. And once again, Siobhan finds me and starts contacting me again. And I feel like I'm being stalked, like seriously. Now I have deactivated my Facebook once again to not be contacted by this bitch and make an Instagram page and the bitch and I make an Instagram page. Hold on. Now I've deactivated my Facebook once again, just so I'm not contacted by this bitch. So I make an Instagram page and the bitch Siobhan finds me on IG and had the nerve to fucking ask to follow me. And now I have deactivated my Instagram too. I feel some type of way because why should I have to distance myself from social media for her? It's almost like she is running me away from being on social media because she can't and won't leave me the fuck alone. Of course, my wife knows everything, but she's being very disrespectful. And I'm sure by my profile picture, she knows I have gotten married, but she still continues to contact me. And she has even left her phone number in my inbox asking me to call her because she needs to talk to me. Listen, we have nothing to talk about ever in life again. I don't know why someone would really fucking think that I would have anything to say to them after putting nude fucking pictures of me up on, on the internet. Facebook is how I keep in contact with long lost family and friends. And the thing about it is when I did have Facebook before I deactivated it, I didn't get on it much, maybe like three times a week. But at times, I want to get on Facebook and interact with my family and friends, but I don't. 
because I'm being stalked. So I'm not on social media networks like that at all. In your opinion, do you feel like I'm letting her run me away if you were in my shoes? Would you continue to just stay completely away or would you just stay completely away from social media? Listen, April, I have done everything, blocked her, all the pages she has contacted me from, and even called the police. And I started doing this back before I ever emailed you the first time. So this has been going on for two years. I feel some type of way because I understand that if I never cheated in the first place, then this wouldn't even been happening. But I did cheat and I can't go back and change it. It's not fair that she keeps getting away with the shit, thinking it's cool to hit me up and stalk me while having a girlfriend. And knowing I'm married, but she keep getting away with it. And it's not cool. So what do I do next? Because I'm all out of fucking ideas. Help, please. When I emailed you last time, I should have added in there about how um, me blocking all of the pages she was contacting me from and how I did call the police because I didn't want you to think that she was contacting me and I wasn't blocking her and just liking drama or whatever because that's definitely not the case. When I say I have nothing to say to that hoe, I have nothing to say to that hoe. She is dead to me. I just don't know why the fuck is she still trying to contact me after putting new pictures of me up. I don't get it. April, what do I do at this point? Do I just stay off of social media forever or what? I don't know. Here is a picture of myself. Please don't show so you can put a face to Trina, which is me. Thanks, April. I really do appreciate you and the advice you give. Love all. She's beautiful. I mean, like, listen, why wouldn't Siobhan want to come stalking your Instagram and your Facebook? Because you're beautiful. And she's probably feeling like, let me just keep trying. Let me keep trying. So basically, Trina is in, was in a relationship. And I remember the email somewhat, but you know, two years ago is a long time. Sometimes I don't even remember why the fuck I went downstairs. To, but you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so I'm starving right now. Okay. So Trina has been married since to a young lady named T. And she was messing with Siobhan like two years ago. But, you know, Trina started cheating on Siobhan. I'm not really sure why. I think it was because if I remember correctly, I think it has something to do with like Siobhan was more or less very um, abusive. And I don't remember if it was physical, but it might have been verbal or mentally. It was one of the two, if I'm correct. If I'm not, then I do apologize, Trina. But I do remember the situation. Anyway, they broke up. And ever since then, freaking Siobhan, which is Trina's ex-girlfriend, has been stalking her through Facebook. She makes up different pages constantly. Like, listen, if you block somebody and then they go and make another page and then you block them again and then they make another page and you block them again, there's definitely got to be something wrong with this person. Like, like I told you guys last week, you got one time to motherfucking block me. I'm not about to go and make another page up just so I can follow you and DM you and just stalk you. That is humiliation to my own self, okay? And an embarrassment to my own self. I don't like to be embarrassed in general, and I'm damn sure not about to embarrass myself. So Trina has called the police, okay? And she has also, like, blocked her on several occasions. The police are like, well, there's nothing they can do about it because it's not a threat. They might not take it that seriously, but it can be a threat. If you are constantly blocking someone and they have done you wrong, even though you have cheated on the person, it doesn't give them a right to stalk you. And it doesn't give them a right to verbally abuse you, or mentally abuse you, or physically abuse you. If you have blocked them out of your life and they keep constantly, constantly, constantly for over two years now, creating new pages on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, then there's definitely a issue right there. It's not like fun and games and giggles. We not, we not trying out. We not, we not doing like, you know what I'm saying? Some type of test to where our experiments to where we can see how many pages we can make up through Facebook when you've already made one like you have to make numerous accounts not just facebook but i do believe you have to make numerous email accounts just to go with these new fucking facebook pages and like for me honestly i really don't feel like getting on social media that much as it is so i'm damn sure not about to make another account up just so that way you can block me for the third the fourth the fifth the sixth the 20th fucking time like 
have some fucking self-esteem, bitch. Like, Siobhan, if you are watching this, have some motherfucking self-esteem and some pride, bitch. This is what we call stalking. Now, the police are not really trying to interfere, and I'm not sure if it's because Trina's black or whatever, but here is what I would do. Now, she's, she, Siobhan is messaging her, asking her, you know, basically to talk to her. There's something I want to talk to you about. We don't know what it could be. Maybe the girl want to apologize. But if it were me on the other line, you kept blocking my ass. Um, and you don't want to accept my friend request or you don't want to accept a conversation with me. Bitch, I'm not going to keep trying to talk to you. Maybe she wants to apologize to Trina. Maybe that's what it is. But she's going real hard at wanting to apologize. So I'm really not thinking it's that. Um, I could be wrong. But now there's two ways around this. You can, one, send her a message and let her know, listen, Siobhan, I have blocked you on numerous accounts, and I'm not really sure what it is that you want to speak with me about. However, if I speak with you, will it stop you from continuously, continuously leaving me messages or creating new accounts? Is there something that you want to get off your chest? Is there something that you need closure on? Sometimes people need closure and sometimes they're not going to stop until they get that complete closure. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe it's something that Siobhan wants closure on. And maybe she's just the type of person where she doesn't understand what the word no means. Okay. So if it were me, I would give her the decency to say what she has to say and keep it pushing. Now, mind you, I wouldn't do it behind my wife's back. I would definitely tell my wife, listen, maybe she needs closure. Maybe this is the closure she needs so that she can move on and be secure within herself and be secure within her relationship. So what I would do is I would definitely inform my spouse, male or female, listen, this is what I'm going to do. And maybe this is going to stop everything. And if it does stop everything, then that's great. But if it doesn't, then this is the next step that you can do. You can, because, well, this is the next step is the reason why I'm saying this is the next step is because once you see where the conversation is going through the DMs, okay, this is where you can, for one, eliminate a lot of the conversations. If she's trying to talk about getting back together with you, then you can eliminate that right there, nip it in the butt. If she's trying to apologize, then you know what you do? To alleviate all of the added stress, even if it's not an apology that you want to hear and you're over it, you sometimes have to just let it go and be the bigger person. Accept the apology and allow her to get the closure she needs, and then you can allow yourself to move on and not feel like you're being stalked or threatened by this fucking Siobhan bitch. But if it continuously goes further, like, you know, you're seeing threats through the, um, the, the DM messages or you're seeing like stalkerish, weirdish moves, then this is where you have to take yourself, get your ass off the motherfucking couch, fuck calling the police, but go to the police station and let them know, listen, I need to speak with the unit for domestic violence because domestic violence just isn't for being hit. It's for verbal and, you know, verbal, mental, and physical abuse. It's a, it's a violent, it's an abuse to a, a spouse or an ex-spouse. It doesn't matter. And you need to be in touch with someone from there. So that way they can make you an order of protection. And then next time that Siobhan bitch contacts you, she'll get in trouble for the shit. And that may stop her from contacting you. So what I would do is I wouldn't automatically just go to the unit or the police station and request this. I would, first thing I would do is inform my wife that this is what I'm going to do and inform her that maybe this is going to take, that maybe this is what it's going to take me to have a conversation with her in order for her to stop harassing me on social media because there's a reason why she's contacting you and constantly making pages up there's always a reason behind something whether it be something petty like oh i just want to do it for laughs and giggles it's still a reason because that's why the fuck she wants to do it for laughs and giggles so there's a reason behind everything oh i just was doing it because i'm bored 
There's the reason, bitch, because you was born and you ain't have shit to do and you ain't got no motherfucking life. You need to go find yourself a new bitch to fuck with and get off of my shit. There's a reason. And she may just be in a relationship with somebody, but maybe she feels like she can't move forward until she realizes that, let me just get the closure that I need with Trina. So that way my new relationship could be a healthy one and could prosper. You never know. There's always a reason behind something that a person is doing. They just don't do the shit because they ain't got shit to do. That's a reason. They're bored. Okay. Oh, I just wanted to be petty because I ain't got shit to do, bitch, because you're bored. Okay. You got shit to do. I get it. So that would be my number one thing is to just see where her head is at and contact her and see what you can do to stop the messages and the freaking weird follows. Like I told y'all. I told y'all bitches, block me if you want to. I don't give a fuck if you block me or not, but I will do this. I won't never fuck with you again. Now, what you would have to do in order for me to fuck with you again, <clears throat> you're going to have to send me an apology, okay? Because if you block me, probably nine times out of ten, I'm going to block your ass too. I mean, like, we're going to play the blocker battle. If you block me, I'm going to block you. What? Then you won't have to try to get in contact with me because I won't fuck with you if you block me. You'd have to fucking send me an apology for real. Like you have to apologize for me to for me to even fuck with you again after blocking me. Because blocking somebody means you don't want to be bothered with them. You don't want to fuck with them. You don't have anything to do with them. And if you don't want to have anything at all to do with me, that's fine. It may hurt my feelings somewhat. But eventually a bitch will get over that shit. And then what will happen? I will move on in life. Just keep it pushing. But there's a reason why she's constantly making up new pages. Because let me tell y'all something. Making up new emails is not easy. You got to think of the right name. And then when you come up with one that you really, really do like, they they be like, oh, sorry, that name is taken. Maybe you can try this. Like, now I got to try another name. Like, I'm not about to sit there and fucking make up all these usernames just to contact you, bitch. Like, no. I mean, like, you gorgeous and all, but there are a whole lot of other bad bitches out there on Instagram and Facebook that I could follow and drool over besides you having to keep on making accounts and accounts and accounts. So, I do believe that there's a reason for the her acting this way. And it may not be stalking. It may be something totally innocent as just wanting to put closure to shit and sometimes that's how people are me i feel like this i don't really need to put closure on a lot of shit because if we end on a bad note bitch i'm not fucking with you that's the closure that i need right there i'm not fucking with you i could care less goodbye senorita senorata whatever you want to call it adios amigos adios amiga see you when i see you peace out bye bye that's how I end it. I'm not trying to get any type of extra closure months down the line. Like, why did you do that to me? I just need to know why. Bitch, if we ended on a bad note, then bitch, fuck you. I'm moving on. And if you need closure, then I don't know what to tell you. But me personally, I'm good. So she may just be one of those people who really need closure. Because maybe you hurt her because you did cheat on her. And maybe she just needs to know why. Or maybe she just wants to say, listen, I forgive you. I just needed to say that I forgive you because I don't want to go on hating you and I don't want you to go on hating me. I need to do this um, because I need to move on. And that sometimes bothers people a lot when they hold remorse against another person. They hold a grudge against a person. Some people just can't function with that shit. Me personally, if you don't like me, you block me, you did some devil shit to me. Okay, bitch, you did some fuck shit, but I'm not fucking with you no more. And I'm not really too curious as to why you did it. Maybe I'm a little bit curious, but I'm not about to be making up accounts and accounts just to find out why you have done something like that to me. But you, like I said, if you block me once, bitch, I'm blocked. I don't give a fuck. You blocked in life, meaning not just social media, but you blocked in life. Like if I see you down the street walking, bitch, I don't see you because you blocked. Okay. Point blank. So I would definitely send her a message and see what it is that she wants to talk to you about. You did say she sent you her you the phone number, I think. Here's what I would do. DM her. Because sometimes contacting somebody and talking via text message or DM, that's not always conventional to some people. It's not always personal. They want to be able to express themselves verbally. 
So if she has sent you her phone number, what I would tell her or say to her is this. Listen, I'll call you, but here's the thing. I need to call you private because I don't want to divulge my phone number. And we can set up a date and a time as for me to give you a phone call. So that way when you do get the private number or the private call that shows up, you're aware that it's me because we've already set up this time slot for you and I to speak verbally as into what you want to discuss with me. That's all you have to do. You know what I'm saying? That way she don't get your phone number. You ain't got to change your shit. And that's it. And leave it at that. But like I said, if it progresses on in the conversation about hurting herself or you or another, then that's when you have to take it into the law's hands and take your ass down there. That's just my input on it and my advice. You guys can definitely let Trina know what you feel about this. Um, But that's exactly what I would do. Let me give her a chance in order to speak her mind because she may have something to say that's valid and it may help me further myself and go on. And I say this because even though you may feel like you don't need closure, you obviously might, Trina, because there is something that she's done to you that made you cheat on her. I'm not sure or remember what it was, but maybe you need the closure as well so that way you can stop calling her a hoe or a bitch because when you call people a hoe or bitch that means that you have some type of malice towards them and it's something about them that you just don't like if it wasn't the case then you wouldn't be using such negative words towards siobhan however you are using these negative words towards her even though she's stalking you but there is a reason behind that and it's something that she's done to you or you dislike about her and i get that but maybe if she was able to give you a conversation or you give her a conversation, maybe that would delete how you feel about her in such a negative way, and you guys both can move past all of that bullshit and drama and continue on happily with your next relationship. You feel me? So let's get on to the next real talk. Okay, you guys. Hi, April. First off, I have to say this. I have been watching you since your very first channel, since you were back in New York. I watch your real talk videos every week, and I still look forward to them. Not to mention your wig videos. Girl, you can slay a wig. Why, thank you. I consider you to be one of the OGs on the YT, and I wish you continued success. You are beautiful You are beautiful inside and out, and it shows, even through the screen. So let the haters hate. You deserve every blessing that comes your way. Keep doing what you do. Thank you, Diva. That means a lot. Like, seriously, I appreciate when people be like, you're the OG of YT. Like, okay, it may not sound that great being an OG, but it definitely is because, hey, you could be an original gangster, all right, original guru, whatever. I don't know, but I'm an OG, bitches, an OG baby zaddy. So anyway, I'm in need of your advice. I know you keep it real and that's what I need. So let's get on to the issue. Names have been changed. Let's call me Lisa and my boyfriend, John. Back in 2014, a friend of mine, let's call her Jessica, invited me to Miami for her birthday. She invited 10 other people and we all met up in Miami to celebrate. That's where I met John and his wife too, LOL. Yep, he was married at the time. Let's call his ex-wife Maria. John and Maria were friends of my of my best friend, Jessica. Jessica and I were really good friends from college. So, of course, I was down to turn up in Miami for her birthday. John came to Miami with his wife. I came down by myself, but I was in a relationship at the time. John and I were not checking for each other in Miami. We had casual conversations as a group, but he didn't try to talk to me like that. And I didn't try to talk to him like that either. We had no reason to. As far as I was concerned, he was Jessica's friend, meaning her friend's friend. He seemed nice, but was really quiet compared to his outspoken, outgoing then wife, now ex-wife. Um, nevertheless, we all had a blast. I'm glad I didn't let my introvert tendencies keep me at home. Girl, I probably would have. After the trip, we all said our goodbyes and started following one another on social media to keep in touch. Three years later, John hits me up on social media. Yeah, girl, he slid into my DM, LOL. He saw that I had moved to New York City where he lives and asked how I was doing and said he wanted to catch up. It was very casual at first, didn't seem suspicious, so I didn't think anything of it. The DM turned into text, text turned into phone calls, and even though the conversation was harmless and innocent, I started to feel uncomfortable. 
See, April, I believe in marriage. I believe that it's sacred, that it's a union between two people, not three, four, five, six, or ten. He never mentioned Maria, so I asked him straight up while we were on the phone one day, so um, how's your wife? He let me know that he was divorced and that he had gotten divorced shortly after the trip to Miami years ago. Fast forward to a few months later. We became friends, text calls, and we even went out a few times. April, I really became fond of him. He's so driven, kind, attentive, and caring. Not to mention good looking too. Girl, he's tall, dark, and handsome. The way I like him. Laugh out loud. I guess I didn't notice it as much on the trip to Miami since I don't check for other women's men. No tea, no shade, LOL. So finally one day he told me that he really liked me and was interested in pursuing more than just a friendship and was hoping that I felt the same. But he wanted to talk to me about something prior. He wanted to have a conversation about his previous marriage and wanted me to know the entire story. When John and Maria were first married, John had a great job and he was making real good money. A year into their marriage, John lost that job and that's when things went south. Maria started fucking other dudes. Six months go by and John still isn't working. Maria was fed up. She didn't, she needed him to get a job. It didn't matter that it was going to be outside of his field. It didn't matter that he would not be using his degree. He needed to get her a job. He needed a job for her. Side note, I don't fault her for that. It's true. A man needs to work. But I do think it was more about her missing the lifestyle that they were living when they first got married. So he got two jobs. He got a retail job and a sales job. That wasn't enough for Maria. They argued all the time. She put him on the couch and she stepped out on him again and again. But he stayed with her and figured that they were having a rough patch and that once he finds a better job, things will get better. Well, this rough patch lasted two years. Eventually, John got tired of it and ended up cheating on Maria with another woman. Yes, girl. The affair went on for several months. He eventually confessed to Maria about it and she was livid. She put him out and served him divorce papers. This was a hard pill for me to swallow, April. He knew that it would be. April, we had had many conversations before about how I felt about infidelity. My thing is this. If you want to go fuck another girl, please go and make sure you take your bags too because you can't even because you can't have me and someone else. That's not how it works. I was engaged in the past to a man I found out was cheating. Girl, I called the whole thing off that day. I have no times for cheating. John knew this, but he wanted to be honest about his past, and I respected that. Even so, I'm even so, me being the nigga that I am, I had to check, um, I had to fact check. When she says she being the nigga that she is, she does not mean she's a guy, okay? So I had to check, I had to fact check everything that John was telling me. So I called Jessica. You know, Jessica was her, is her good friend, and that's how she met John. So I called Jessica. I told her that I had been talking to her friend John for the past few months and that I wanted to know the real tea, the real story. Now, Jessica is cool with John and Maria, but Jessica is my girl. She told me everything, and it was all true. John wasn't lying. Fast forward to today. We're, we're a year in now. John makes me feel so special. He loves everything about me. He goes the extra mile to put a smile on my face. I'm so in love with him, and I've never felt this way about anyone before. John is working in his field again, and I'm so happy for him. He wants to marry me, but he doesn't want to bring old baggage into our relationship, so he's counseling right now, which I think he is very mature of him. He's even went, we, we have even went ring shopping a few weeks ago. April, I love this man, but I've been hurt before and I don't want to sign up for another breakup. I'm in my thirties, got a master's degree, got my own good job, my own place and my own goals. And I'm trying, and I'm not trying to waste my time. My questions are for you are this one. Is it true what they say? Once a cheater, always a cheater. Am I getting myself up to be played? Am I setting myself up to get played Two. Maria has no idea that John and I are in a relationship. She has changed her social media when she has gotten divorced. There's a part of me that feels weird about the entire thing. Even though her and I are not friends, I still feel like because we aren't strangers, she at least deserves a conversation. It's very possible that we could run into each other one day, and I don't want the drama. I just don't think it's right for her to find out through the grapevine. Am I wrong? John disagrees with me. 
Jessica also, who is very happy for us, also disagrees with me. John says, yes, they were married at a time, but they have no kids together and they have no ties. So we don't, have, we don't owe her anything. No explanations or conversations. That she can find out when the news reaches her. And if she has any questions or concerns, she can take it up with God. What are your thoughts? Is he right? I'd appreciate your advice. Your, advice. your loyal fan, Lisa. Wow. So basically, <clears throat> you know, basically, Lisa went to Miami with her bestie, Jessica. And Jessica not only invited Lisa, but she invited 10 other people, some of probably which Lisa didn't know. She met John and his wife, Maria, you know, and they just casually talked as in groups. They didn't go out on the beach and sit there and have a conversation together. But Right after the trip to Miami, John got divorced. His marital affairs have become shitty. He lost his job. His wife was pressuring him to get another job. And she didn't care if he was selling groceries or make or selling hot dogs at the hot dog stand. He needed to have a job. So six months by six months went by and John did get a job. It wasn't in his field. He got two jobs. Two job man. He got two jobs. And um his wife still wasn't happy with that. He started to um, cheat on her as well because she was stepping out on him. He was sleeping on the couch. Once he confessed to his wife that he was cheating on her, she became upset, irate, and divorced his ass. And then that's when he hit up Lisa. Now, not probably right after the divorce, but, you know, they did start DMing each other, which is cool. Now she want to know, okay, these particular questions. Okay. She's asking me, is it true what they say? Once a cheater, always a cheater. Am I setting myself up to be played again? First of all, that's just what people say. I'm pretty sure that someone who was really angry made up that saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. That's not true. People do make mistakes and that's just a part of growing up. Okay. I'm pretty sure that someone or not everyone has cheated, but you know, sometimes what happens is it's a lack of communication and that's where the cheating starts to be involved. That's when cheating is just involved. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to do with just the man as a dog. I mean, there are some men out there that are just motherfucking dogs and they can't help but to cheat on their girl. That's just what the fuck they do. There's no real reason. They're just, the reason is they're fucking dogs. But sometimes in a relationship, there's lack of communication and attentiveness and love. And in John's situation, that's what it was. It was a lack of communication. His wife was stepping out on him. She didn't put him on the couch. So two years went by. He played along with this for two years. He felt like finally, you know, maybe we'll, this is just a rough patch and we'll get through this once I get a job. First of all, bitch, if you cheat on me, I don't give a fuck how hard the rough patch is. It is to do or to die, whatever the motherfucking marriage saying is, for better or for worse, okay? Just because a nigga don't have a job don't mean that you got to go out and cheat on him, bitch. Like, who the fuck does that? That means that you would cheat on him regardless, and you really don't think highly of yourself, because if you're selling yourself for a Louis Vuitton bag or some pussy, then you got some issues. So there's no rough patch. Yeah, it is a rough patch, and that's what we're supposed to work together on. We're supposed to get through this together as a couple. But, bitch, if you slide in somebody else's DMs and they sliding up in you, then there's an issue. Um, but John did get tired of it and he eventually decided to creep out on his wife. First of all, she shouldn't have no business. Maria, John's wife, had no business to get livid with John because he finally admitted to her or uh, and said, Listen, I I've got somebody that I've been with. Bitch, she was doing it all along too. So why is it a problem? But you know what? Some things happen for reasons, and maybe it was a good thing that he did tell her because he did wait around for two years for things to go back to normal, and it didn't. So he moved on. You can but take but so much in a relationship, especially if someone is ignoring you or they got you sleeping on the couch and shit. Like, listen, I'm not a pet. I don't want to sleep on a motherfucking couch. I'm not a pillow. I'm not supposed to be on the motherfucking couch. I'm supposed to be in the bed next to you. But I guess because I don't make enough money, a bitch can't sleep with a nigga. Then if that's the case, you should have long been gone, John. But is a cheater always a cheater? Once a cheater, always a cheater? That's not so. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, like I said, it, it depends on the situation. And obviously, his wife was not making him happy. Who the fuck would be happy with somebody stepping out on them, putting them on the couch, and constantly telling them, well, I don't care what kind of job you get. You better just get a job. Yes, true indeed, a man doesn't need to have a job man needs to have a job. 
and so do women. I'm not going to make this like all about the men. Everybody needs to have a job because what the fuck? How else are you going to survive? Unless you didn't hit the lotto and that money might run out dry too. But I do believe that somebody that was really upset made up the saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. That's not the case. You're not setting yourself up for failure or heartache. But if you don't find out or give it a try, then what are you going to do? Just sit there and say, I wish I could have, would have, but I didn't. Listen, let me tell you something. Once a cheater is not always a cheater. That's not the case. It's just that's what people say. And we can't always go over what people say, you know. For two, <clears throat> should you tell his ex-wife that y'all are in a relationship? First of all, uh, Lisa, you don't even know that bitch. You went to Miami and you met John and his wife, Maria, at the time. Y'all ain't friends. Y'all ain't even motherfucking associates. If y'all have um, socialized with each other on Facebook a few times, then that's great. Kudos to y'all for that. But what makes you feel like you owe that bitch anything? She's not your friend. She's your friend's friend. Y'all don't socialize, so you don't owe her anything. You don't owe her any type of explanation. John is correct, and so is your, um, your bestie, Jessica. You do not owe her anything. I'm pretty sure she probably don't even remember who the fuck you are on the trip. Jessica will probably have to sit there and say, well, she looked like this and she was this. Not saying that you're irrelevant, but to her, you're irrelevant because you guys don't know each other like that. You guys met each other on a Miami trip and maybe y'all became associates back then on the trip. But once y'all went y'all separate ways, y'all didn't hang out with each other. Y'all wasn't trying to be meet up and have tea and go do girl stuff. That's not what y'all was doing. Y'all left Miami and carried on, and that was that. So, no, I don't think you owe that bitch a goddamn thing. Y'all are not friends. Let me tell you something. So everybody gets in a relationship in their lifetime, and then they break up with the person, and then they move on to the next person. Do you think that that person should go and say, well, listen, to some random person, not even random, but okay, so I was married to you. We don't have no kids together, but I just want to tell you that I'm in a relationship now. Nigga, why are you calling and telling me this? I don't give two fucks if you're in a relationship. That's not my concern. We don't got no kids together, so why are you telling me this? I don't give a fuck. And this is how I feel about it. Like, seriously, you don't owe her any type of explanation. You don't owe her anything. If you see her on the street, I'm guaranteeing you she probably is not even going to remember you from Miami trip. But if you see her on the street, so what? What the fuck she going to do to you? Beat you up? I doubt that. But two, she didn't want to be with him because had she did, she wouldn't have stepped out on him on several times and several occasions. She divorced him because he started cheating on her. That's like, who the fuck does that? You can't do that. You, you just can't do that. But I will say this. Jessica is right and so is John. You don't have to spill your business to her. I'm pretty sure she does not call John up and tell him the relationship that she's in now. Like, I'm pretty sure she doesn't. So why would you put yourself out there for some drama and bullshit? Like, you probably won't even see the bitch anywhere. And if you do, look, look New York is a big place. But if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. But I don't feel like you need to divulge your personal business to her about her ex-husband that she has no children with. She doesn't even have a business with him. She has nothing with him. So therefore, I don't feel like you owe her any type of explanation as to why you fucking her ex-husband. Straight up. But maybe some others feel that way. I know I don't. Like, listen. If you and I were friends, and when I say friends, I may want to rephrase that as if you and I were associates, like, oh, I seen you. Hey, girl, how you doing? Whatever. And you're not with your man anymore or he's divorced you. Bitch, um, I know there's a girl code, but we ain't really friends. We're associates, meaning when I see you, I associate with you by saying hello. Nothing more than that. Do you think that I really owe you an explanation as to why I'm fucking your man or that your man is with me now? No, bitch, I don't. Now, if you was my best friend then, okay, girl code, girl code. I'm going to let you know, like, this nigga done slid up to my DMs, and I'm also going to let him know, you already know that's my bestie. Why would you even try to play her stuff, her like that? So, in my opinion, no, you don't owe him or her anything. Excuse me. You don't owe Maria anything. She's probably going to be on the other line or on the other side of the screen looking and laughing, like, why the fuck is she telling me this for? I don't care. Some things are just left better just left alone okay and i mean that sincerely because sometimes we give out too much information about ourselves or the things that we're doing or that we're into we share too much and that's kind of the part where all this social media sh bullshit gets into play and you gotta go through this and gotta go through that like listen let me tell you something 
I wouldn't give that bitch not one piece of information because it's not your place to. She done moved on in her life and she's probably got a man and is not even concerned about her ex-husband, especially if he's not giving her alimony. He's definitely not giving her child support and he's probably not even giving her the D. So therefore, what makes you feel like you owe her any type of excuse or any type of explanation? Girl, no. Con continue on and continue on with your love affair or your love with John. Because reaching out to his ex-wife, let me tell you something. Now, women can be really petty, and I get this. And sometimes they divulge a little bit too much information, too. You don't want to open up a can of worms that you just don't want to open up. Meaning, you found out that he was telling you all the entire truth about your relationship or his relationship with his wife. However, let's say you just reached out to this bitch. And she might be in one of those petty moves because she's bored and she ain't got shit to do. And because you had some nerve to fucking contact her and tell her that you was fucking her ex-husband now. And she didn't even want to read that shit. So what she could do, she can write up a story. She could text you messages of just bullshit that he used to do to her, that John used to do to her. And then it's going to get you in your feelings or feel some type of way. Why put yourself through that, sweetheart? Don't bother with the lady. Now, if you guys are invited to another showcase in Miami, maybe that's when you would want to tell her. But in all honesty, I would definitely try to avoid hanging out with her in Miami if you and Jessica decide to do that again. Um, your friend and your boyfriend is definitely correct. You don't have to involve Maria in it. It's just like opening up a can of worms. Like, girl, no. So, you guys, I'm going to go because I'm really feeling like shitty right now. I don't even know if I'm going to do this wig video because. I just don't know. I'm really feeling tired and crappy, but I'm going to try. But in the meantime, I love you guys. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below or your opinions for our followers or our emails rather. And I will see you guys on the other side.